Okay, let's go ahead and uh, deposit those payments that we received from our clients. Uh, as we deposit, and we previously mentioned that, uh, two accounts will be impacted, right? The undeposited funds will be going down, thus we will credit it, and our general bank account will be going up, thus we will debit it. Okay, so let's uh, get ready for that. So here we are. Our first deposit is going to be depositing this for payment. Okay, so it's going to be banking, make deposits. There they are, because we're kind of doing it again in a catch-up mode, but in a very detailed, kind of almost like a live mode, but we have all of them. Typically, we would deposit them as a command. But anyway, here we have these uh, four items. Right, they add up to $9,762.50, right? So again, what's going to happen? Let's actually detail it. All right, so our... Um, let me switch it up a little. So it's easier. Our bank account will increase by $9,762.50, right? Our undeposited funds, on the other hand, will decrease by each one of these amounts. So let's detail it. Right, since it's our last month of going in such level of details, let's um, indicate it. Use this as an opportunity. So here it is, right? Debits and credits are in balance, right? So each one of these amounts will become a credit to undeposited funds, account 12,000. And this total will become a debit to 10,011. So here it is, right again. We do see this account right here. That's our bank account that will be debited. And this amount right here, total deposit, will be debit to account 10,100. Each one of these we're taking from undeposited funds, and you can see it right here. So now they're showing us the general ledger accounts. Well, good, right? It's better that they show it sometimes than never at all. So anyway, here it is, right? Each one of this is a credit to account 12,000, and this total is a debit to 10,100, okay? Uh, the date, let's make sure we have the date correct, 419. Here it is, our deposit. We can use transaction number in the memo. All right, right here. We can also probably put it right here and uh we can go and save it again all right next one is all right so this one's been deposited uh clear content all right next are the ones from 17. so here they are all right okay so here we have quite a bit we're not going to indicate each one of them that's a little bit too much but but what we can say is we are depositing $46,006.50. So our bank account will be debited. And then that money is coming out of our undeposited funds, right? So that has to be credited. Right? So that's our debits right here. Right? And each one of those becomes credit. So here it is again. All right? Let's just change uh, the date is fine. Let's just do this right here. Put it in the memo box just for kicks and giggles. Again, um, accounts are shown here. It just doesn't say it's a debit and credit, but we know. We know that this total will be debit to account 10,100 because it will go up and it's an asset and assets go up when debited. And then each one of these lines, right, each one of these amounts, which add up to you know, forty six thousand two hundred and six dollars and fifty cents because that's the increase in our account. They'll come out from our deposit funds. We'll take the checks from our drawer, and that asset will be reduced. Those each one of those is a credit to account twelve thousand. All right, save and new. Next ones are the deposits from. Okay, we are still done. Right here, thirty-eight thousand. Same thing. Right, again, these are our credits, this is our debit, 
let's just show it okay here it is uh let's just change the date and use the transaction number as our memo all right so there it is There it is, right? 38,893 and 75. That will be debit to our bank account once it clears, and these will be credits to undeposited funds because we'll reduce that by undeposited funds by that amount. All right, we're good to go. So this is again debit to 10,100. These are credits to 12,000 savings. All right, a few more. Few more, so now we're doing the ones from 19. All right, makes sense. Again, the behavior in terms of accounts is very similar. Right now, we're just touching our bank account and undeposited funds, right? We're converting one asset into another. Notice we're no longer touching revenue. That's been done when we build the clients. it is right this is a debit to 10,100 and each one of those is a credit and in some they're up to 13,313 dollars and 75 cents each one of this is a credit to account 12,000 here we have $1,095. We can't show it here, right? So let's, let's, because there's fewer items so we can actually detail. So let's go ahead and detail on this last few, because again, April is the last month in the simulation that will have this level of details. After that, we're going to go and uh, show you bypasses where you don't have to go through undeposited funds, account receivables will just hit sales and um, bank account directly. All right, so eight, eight, 75, and you'll see the difference. You'll see the difference in reporting and all that. And um, I think that will be important. Oops. You can see the debits and credits are in balance, right? That's a very important part. What else is happening? Okay, so this amount right here, this total deposit, right? That's the debit to account 10,100. That's what we show here. And then um, each one of this, right? This is a credit to 12,000. This is a credit to 12,000, so on and so forth. So again, you'll see how the general ledger is impacted. All right, so this is good to go, saving you. And we have one more right here. Right, very cool. So again, they add up to 3,315, but they are made up of these credits. All right, debits and credits are in balance, right? That's what we're going for. It's right here. So each one of this has a credit to 12,000 and the sum of the deposit is a debit to 10,100. Good to go, right? So that kind of concludes it. So let's go ahead and save and close it. Oh, change the date on this one, 23. Right, let's see. Um, I'm not sure I did the date correct on the previous one. Yeah, this one is... Two and then this one is 21, and this one is 20, and this one is 19. So this one is 20, 19, okay, and the previous one is 19 as well. All right, good. The dates are straightened out. That concludes depositing those undeposited funds, right? So what happens is we first, when we build the clients, right, revenue goes up accounts receivable goes up then 
um, we start receiving those payments, undeposited funds go up, account receivable goes down. Then we take those undeposited funds, we take them to the bank, account balance goes up, right? And undeposited funds goes down. So technically, again, what we'll show you in the following months, how you go straight from revenue to bank account and bypass those conversions from one asset to another. But in live mode, you would typically have those, you know, conversions. You want to know, all right, you know, what did I bill? What have I received? What have I deposited? Or that's why you have those steps. Anyway, please subscribe. Please stay tuned. We have a few more interesting elements coming up in April. And then the following months, we'll show you different ways to book similar data, right, that we booked in the first four months. Next is payroll. We will use now two separate accounts for payroll, right? We're going to have payroll wages and payroll taxes to show that difference because for tax purposes, when you report it, uh, you do need to break those out. Anyway, please stay tuned. Thank you.